If you wanted to take your React code and make it into a web component, Direflow is a pretty good place to start. It has all the needed build scripts to take your code and turn it into a web component for any framework or native code to use. It allows you to use it within another React app without having the bloat of having to include React twice. And what this video is going to do is it's going to talk about getting started with Direflow and some of the problems that I encountered using it. So first, let's just get started. We'll pull this to the right, open up a terminal, and we'll just go into documents and start going through these little steps. I've already got the Direflow client, so I'm just gonna go Direflow create. Um, we're gonna call this uh, Dire test. Uh, and we're just gonna do everything in TypeScript. All right, and then we're gonna walk into Dire test. And what we're gonna do is install and then start it up just so we can get, see what this demo does. Now, if you run NPM start, you should see a little server pop up localhost and what will be inside is just one web component in an HTML page and if we open this up we will see the structure of the documents right. so what we're looking at right now is the public folder and inside there is the web component the example makes and just a bare bones HTML page. So before we start actually looking at the code, I'm just gonna show you what the results are when you actually build this. So if you wanna use this in a non-React app, you just run npm run build. This will create a build folder with a JSON or JavaScript file that you will include into your HTML page. And you can sh quickly show this like this. So now we have an HTML page with a dire test and we just have to include the source directory of that that JSON file we just or JavaScript file we just created and then we can show this in the web page so basically if you just take a bare bones HTML page everything will be inside this Direflow bundle for your component to work all right now if you want to use this in a react app what you have to do is you, in the build command, you just have to specify that it's a lib. Now, the distinction between these two is that the lib will not be including the React itself. So you'll, you'll still get an export JSON file, which will have your entire build code, but it'll be vastly smaller than your complete bundle here. Um, also, since it's TypeScript, all the types for the component will be there, which is this file right here. Um, just just for clarification on, or just for visual aspects of this, we'll sh I'll just show you the difference in sizes. So in your lib, your your file is going to be around thirty. This in this case is around thirty-seven k. And in the just standard web, it was around, you know, 188K. So quite sizable, so. Now, since we've seen what the results are from building this example component, let's start looking at the actual code. So minimize this, close this and we'll look at the actual code. And that's gonna be an app.tsx. And what it should look like is a standard React component, nothing too fancy. We have our definitions up here that get passed as a prop. We have our HTML code here. And we have just some defaults for this prop. Um, the only one thing that might be unique is we're using an event up here, um, and these are just standard events that are bare bones HTML, and they get handled from this on click here. 
So the beauty of using Direflow is it's essentially just using the normal React that you're all used to, just with some built-in components and hooks to help making working with it easier. And you can see some of those setups outside um, to actually configure your component. And But for the most part, you're just going to use this standard um, layout to begin with and just add some of the dire flow components to modify the initiation of your web component. So now I'm gonna start talking about some of the problems I had working with Direflow. And the first problem I had was just styling the page. Normally what you do is you just include your CSS at the top and then Webpack will come through and then bundle that into a minified single file, CSS. And what's different with a web component is all the styles have to be inside the component. And the way Direflow gets around that is with a styles tag. And all this style tag does is it takes your CSS and then makes it, it just wraps it in a styles tag. And we can see this run build. Put this over here. And if we just look at this, inspect this, look into the shadow DOM, we can see a styles. And these will match the CSS. The next problem I had was with actually styling this CSS with like CSS variables. You can see that up here, there's a whole bunch of prefixes on all your CSS. Um, and for most things, that wasn't a big problem because the, the CSS selectors still match. But when I did something like this, where I wanted a CSS variable to cascade all the way down, it didn't seem to properly want to work. Make this blue. And we'll do var main color. So you can see that the CSS page is just not working. And it has something to do with the way the scoped works against the host. So the way I get around this is you can disable that scoping. And default. And now you'll see this turn nice and blue. Now, the next problems are all related to the state of Direflow at the moment. So if you look up Direflow and go to its GitHub, you'll see that it hasn't been updated in a while. And this is a problem because it relies on React scripts in the back end. And so that makes Direflow directly connected to whatever version of the React scripts it was using to do all its building. And I can show you a few problems that came up because of that. So we'll go here. To do that, I'm gonna bring up uh, my the application I was working on. All right, so I'm gonna just close this drag over the application I was working on and just gonna do um, a quick run of it so you can see what it looks like. All this application does is, sure, all it does is it takes text and or law text and make it into an image. So you can see this. Um, doesn't do much at the moment, but what I wanna show you off is some of the problems I had with SVGs. So in my code, what I had to do was, what I had to do to make the SVGs work is I used them as a normal image, did all my sizing in CSS, and this source right here is just a massive base 64 string. Um, this was a problem with the Webpack version not being in line with the tool to convert SVG, SVGs into uh, components or to embed the CS or to embed the actual SVG into it. Um, normally you can do either just a straight up import, something like this, or 
Or if you have the proper configuration in your Webpack, you could do something like this, where you actually use this as an actual component like this. Um, this style, you would do something like this. But with the current Webpack they're using in this project, I was not able to actually include any SVGs without the build failing. So converting it to base64 was the quickest and dirtiest way around that problem. The other problem revolves around what version of React it actually uses. So in, your, in my package, you'll see the peer dependency um, versions. So this component is expecting the outer project to use React 16.13.1. And for some projects, I'm assuming using uh, an older version of React might cause problems. And f for example, if you were to create a new project, you will not be able to grab this component. It will give you, it will throw this error at you. Basically saying that if you use React Create to create a new React project, it'll basically say that we're using 18.1.0 while the application, or the component I just created requires 16.13.1. So you'll either have to downgrade or presumably you'll be able to use the full bundle potentially. Um, but that seems definitely not like a clean route to go. So those are all the current problems I've had with um, Direflow, but even with that, I would probably still recommend it. The version problem seems relatively solvable, so I'm hoping that in the future, it will be on the latest React version. Um, the only thing I would... Uh, otherwise suggests is using potentially a smaller framework, something like Stencil. Um, if you're primarily just making web components um, that are relatively smaller and you don't care to have the full-blown React support, um, Stencil seems like an amazing um, way to make web components and it's what Ionic uses. But, but I'm, I'm happy so far with Direflow.